The champion filly Quartzer showed that she'd lost none of her brilliance when she defeated the Colts down the straight six at Flemington. Running down towards the 550 metre mark now, and good old Ted just the leader from Street Ruffian. Quartzer is pocketed away. Ark Regal on her outside. Recabite nearer the rails. Wide out Golden Prayer. Impressionism was next, followed by Reganza and Patronise pulled to the outside, but very long way from them. Here's Quartzer coming with a big run at the 300. She's bounded up and hit the lead from Street Ruffian. Raced away from them. Then Recabite holding down third from Prince Celieri, but the mighty Philly Quartzers. Three lengths in front with 100 to go. Prince Celieri got the second, but it's all Quartzer. Wins the Ascot. Violised up by three. Princiliari. Patronise pulled to the outside, but very long way from them. Here's Quartzer coming with a big run at the 300. She's bounded up and hit the lead from Street Ruffian. Raced away from them. Then Recabite holding down third from Princiliari, but the mighty Philly Quartzers. Three lengths in front with 100 to go. Princiliari got the second, but it's all Quartzer. Wins the Ascot. Violised up by three Princiliari. Taken to the outside as Quartzer went up to good old Ted and Street Ruffian. 300 metres left to go. Quartzer goes to the front. Golden Prayer second out by the patronise. He wants to drift off the track. Quartzer goes to the front though. Harry goes for home in the Ascot Vale. And the filly kicked away. Quartzer's two links in front. Prince Alieri runs on. It looks like a winning break for Quartzer though. Prince Alieri runs on when it's all over. And Tango Master late from Recovite. But Quartzer, she's a brilliant filly. Eased up one at three links. Second, Prince Alieri. Third home was Tango Master then... The Colin Hayes trained import Almorad headed weights for both the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups. However, it was Research, the answered horse of the year, who bookmakers installed as early favourite for the Melbourne Cup. Almorad made his Australian debut in the Group 2 Craigley Stakes at Flemington. Danamite, my steely Dan. The Phantom was well away. Royal Pardon up there early. They were followed by Almorad going up to a forward position and wider route was Apollo run zipping up to go to near the front. Back midfield was Stavardale and they were followed by Perfect. Nice Steely Dan led by a length and a half to Apollo Run and Elmerad third followed by Superimpose. The stable mate Terrific goes up four deep and Bravado in the centre, Mr Danamite the rails. Then Native Neptune around for Triero and the Phantom. Royal Pardon will back be reasonable. Followed by Perfect Dancer, Stavardale and last of all Trapine Queen. On straightening, 550 metres to go. My Steely Dan grabbed by Apollo Run. Apollo Run went to the front, Elmerad third, then Mr Danamite. Superimpose into the clear they were followed by Bravado. Apollo run in front of the big chestnut, kicked the length to Elmerad. Superimpose is coming hard now. Apollo run in front, Elmerad the centre end, Superimpose. Couchy goes for the whip, they crowd Elmerad. Superimpose, Elmerad battling back, Apollo run still in front. Apollo run, Elmerad. Apollo run, Elmerad fighting to the line. Apollo run, odds tight. Maybe Apollo run, Elmerad kept going with him. And Superimpose the outside, they got very tight in the last 100 metres. Royal Pardon was next in, then Mrs. Bravado, Stavardale not in the hunt at the 250, Apollo run the leader, a half in front of Superimpose under the whip, Almorad in the centre getting tight and Varoom, Apollo run just the leader, Almorad Superimpose trying to reach him, three across the track here, Almorad and Apollo run, a bobbing finish, they hit the line together, Almorad or Apollo run, they've hit it locked together. Has, has got the photo, good speed, Apollo run's got it, number four's got it. Apollo Run has just has run third, take nothing away from Superimpose. Lee Friedman had said earlier in the week the only doubt with the horse uh, would be second up over 1600. Keep following him, he's a, following him, he's a good horse, and so too are the first and second place getters. Apollo Run. The T Rose Stakes saw yet another rising star from the coming stable. At the 200 mark, Ockletree and Tristan R fighting it out, clear of Delightful Kingdom, a little kiss and gamine, but Tristan R burst away. Tristan R shot clear 100 metres out, she's far too good for them. There were plenty of slows for Tristan R, they all said she couldn't win, win but they were wrong. Tristan R beat Ockletree, third is a little... Tristan R burst away, Tristan R shot clear 100 metres out, she's far too good for them. There were plenty of slows for Tristan R, they all said she couldn't win, win but they were wrong. Tristan R beat Ockletree, third... Third is a little kiss. Then maybe changing the name of the Marlborough Cup. Also change the dog's luck. 700 to go and Inga Tate is in control a half to Ben Barra King three quarters to Ireland Bay the outside and then Tin Woodman Boardwalk Angel about fifth but out wide and Glenview next on the rail 600 to go two lengths to Aces and Kings Kyra Lat dropping out and then came Acid Print Redelver and Dark Bow further back as Isle Clay Hero on the rails El Murder Jazz spotting them a long start round the turn Isomer a long way back in the field too and they set sail for home and Northern Copy on the rails Inga Tate is first for home from Ben Barra 
Barra King, Aces and Kings and Glenview winding up on the outside and they were followed by Darkbow and Boardwalk Angel out wide. It's Ben Barra King tackled by Glenview and now Darkbow, Petrero diving through, Glenview in front, Petrero the rails finishing well, Petrero flies through on the rails, he's won, Petrero from Glenview, Darkbow third. First for home from Ben Barra King, Aces and Kings and Glenview winding up on the outside and they were followed by Darkbow and Boardwalk Angel out wide. It's Ben Barra King tackled by Glenview and now Darkbow, Petrero diving through, Glenview in front, Petrero the rails finishing well, Petrero flies through on the rails, he's won, Petrero from Glenview, Darkbow third. At his Australian debut, Al Murad was narrowly beaten in the Craigley Stakes, but he is quick to make amends at his next start. Superimpose hit the front, Apollo run challenging and then Riverina Charm, the Phantom on the rails and next research at the 200 metre mark, Superimpose the leader, the Phantom goes for the rails, here's Almered now, Almered going through and then Apollo run, Almered hit the front, he's just in front of the Phantom and Apollo run, Almered ridden out to the line, Almered's won it! By a neck Apollo run and third the leader. The Phantom goes for the rails. Here's Almered now. Almered going through and then Apollo run. Almered hit the front. He's just in front of the Phantom and Apollo run. Almered ridden out to the line. Almered's won it. By a neck Apollo run and third the Phantom. Then Tristan Hill was set to dominate the Phillies Classics during the spring. However, at a next start, the Group 1 flight stakes. Those plans were upset by another very good filly. Into the straight at the 400 mark and Preschool and La Warra are the leaders from Potsa Rica. Marshall sitting quietly on Tristan R. She's about to unleash and here she comes. A little kiss is looming up and further out is Dual Treasures at the 200. Tristan R. the leader. Ockletree getting through near the fence. A little kiss is tackling Tristan R. Tristan R. and a little kiss. A little kiss is headed the favourite. Tristan R. coming again. He's got a bit up his sleeve on a little kiss though and this filly's going to score an outstanding win. She was last out of the barrier and first home. This is at the 200. At the 200. Tristan Tristanar the leader, Ockletree getting through near the fence, a little kiss is tackling Tristanar, Tristanar and a little kiss, a little kiss is headed the favourite, Tristanar coming again, he's got a bit up his sleeve on a little kiss though and this filly's going to score an outstanding win, she was last out of the barrier and first home. A little Assisted kiss by a confident Shane Dye ride, a little kiss became the first group one winner for her sire Sackford. The return clash between Stargazer and Stylish Century came in the group one spring champion stakes. It was the first occasion that Stylish Century revealed his bold front-running style. Over the rise, Stylish Century has a big lead. Stylish Century four lengths in front of Stargazer, and then dancing Marlon Zamoff on the outside is starting to get home strongly, followed by Interstellar. Stylish Century is a mile in front at the 200 mark, though he's got it one. He's about four in front of Stargazer, and then Zamoff and Prokel Haram, who said he couldn't run a middle distance. Stylish Century, he's done all of the bullocking in front, and he bolts away with the champion. Champion stakes. Stargazer second, Prokel Harum third by Interstellar. Stylish Century is a mile in front at the 200 mark, though he's got it one. He's about four in front of Stargazer. And then Zamoff and Prokel Harum, who said he couldn't run a middle distance. Stylish Century, he's done all of the bullocking in front and he bolts away with the champion stakes. Stargazer second, Prokel Harum third, fourth Zamoff. And in winning the first of the season's classics for three year olds, Stylish Century broke a race record that has stood for 13 years. $6,000 purchase as a yearling, this son of double century produced just a glimpse of what lay ahead. Stepping up to 1,600 metres, Kortzer again tackled the Colts in the Group 2 Mooney Valley Stakes. 700 from the judge, the pressure about to be applied. It's Economy in front with Sylvatica going up, followed by Dr. Grace, the Beal out deep. Prince Aleri behind them, needing a, a not Prince uh, Amiquil going up, and Prince Aleri getting through on the inside. The Beal next. Quartz is on the rail, she's boxed away, and Dyke getting her off the fence now from Raganza and Hot Arch. The Quartz are trying to get into the clear as they turn for home, where it's Sylvatica just in front of Economy, Dr. Grace, and on the outside, the Beal joining in. Quartz has pulled out wide from Prince Aleri. Zabil goes to the front from Dr. Grace and Sylvatica. Quartz is struggling. She's not going to run a place, maybe. It's Zabil punched out by Clark. Too good for Dr. Grace. And it's Zabil first, Dr. Grace second. Quartz a third. Quartz a third. It was an impressive win by Zabil. And with the Caulfield Cup was the Lee Friedman train superimposed. He showed that his preparation was on target in the Group 2 Turnbull Stakes.
on the turn 550 meters left to go and Vo rogue swings for home leading by about four lengths now royal part on his second research to the outside and then prime risk followed by apollo run further back is king's high getting up on the inside below the 400 now and small ask for Vo rogue he leads under the whip by a length and a half research is running on very powerfully and now superimpose closing strongly superimpose has raced to the lead from Vo rogue who found nothing research got the second but super Superimpose at the 100, drew away from Research. Vorag out of a place for Citizen, finishing well, but superimposed by two. Research second, and third is Citizen. Been crossed. Up on the inside, below the 400 now, and small ask for Vorag. He leads under the whip by a length and a half. Research is running on very powerfully, and now Superimpose closing strongly. Superimpose has raced to the lead from Vorag, who found nothing. Research got the second, but Superimpose at the 100, drew away from Research. Vorag rag out of a place for citizen finishing well but superimposed by two research second and third is citizen been class thoroughbreds in the land vo rogue drifted markedly and the strong money was for el morad it is winning sequence in the group one caulfield stakes they come towards the home turn on the inside it's our westminster just the leader from vitalik on his outside almost level as they swing around the home turn and small ass for him and he's put his nose in front vo rogue dr grace running on and el morad trying to barge through in the middle is finishing well vitalik sweeping out wide vo rogue didn't find a lot and el morad hit the front now vitalik is out after him, Elmered about a neck in front of Vitalik. Elmered ridden out to the line under the whip. Vitalik tries to reach him on the outside. They hit it, and Elmered won it by a long neck. El to the front, Elmered bullets his way through, but Vitalik flashes. Vitalik comes after Elmered, then the Phantom. It's Vitalik going to Elmered. Vitalik and Elmered fighting back. Elmered the inside of Vitalik. Elmered still a half length in front. Vitalik lunges. No. Elmeret. Today's field was, um, you know, very high class, Dan, and uh, the horse has only improved his, his few runs he's had in Australia, and, um, you know, he's a lovely horse, and he's got a lot going for him. The Cup, the grey flash had treated the cream of Australia's milers with the same contempt. From the planet, the Epsom winner still the leader, travelling all right before the turn. Three quarters, Tin Woodman and Glenview looking for a run behind the leader. Then came Pull to the outside, this Painted Ocean when they balance, followed by Boardwalk Angel, and then Planet Ruler right down the outside. From the planet in front of Glenview, who's got out to tackle him at the 200 metre mark. Then came Planet Ruler running on, and Cole Diesel's coming with him now. Glenview got to the lead. Cole Diesel, Planet Ruler, try to reach him. Glenview in front, Cole Diesel. Cole Diesel with the burn by like finish bobbed his nose and might have won it from Glenview a photo between the pair then planet ruler right down the outside from the planet in front of Glenview who's got out to tackle him at the 200 meter mark then came planet ruler running on and Cole Diesel's coming with him now Glenview got to the lead Cole Diesel planet ruler try to reach him Glenview in front Cole Diesel Cole Diesel with a burn by like finish bobbed his nose and might have won it from Glenview a photo between the pair since trainer John Marr and prominent owner Lloyd Williams have enjoyed considerable success success with their imported horses. In the Herbert Power Handicap, the combination produced another Cups contender. Down to the 250, he opened up two lengths Apollo run, then stirring in a gap further back in the field to Boulon running on, but Nairizi has pulled the whip now, he's two lengths in front, holding Apollo run and stirring at Vay, and it's Nairizi who'll get into the Caulfield Cup. Nairizi goes on to win it by three lengths Apollo run, not a line flash home for third. Ring in the Herbert Power elevated him to favouritism for the 1989 Foster's Caulfield Cup. Following the flight stakes, it was discovered that Tristan O was suffering from a seasonal complaint, but nothing could be taken away from the winner. Both fillies continued their spring campaigns in the 1600 metre classic, the 1000 guineas at Caulfield. Golden Prayer, the leader before the home turn from a little kiss. Runs coming quickly around the outside. Running on is Queen Guinevere. Tristan R. Four wide running on and hasty departure. Very deep. When they balance for home, Golden Prayer tackled by a little kiss. Tristan R. Now. Tristan R. Comes on strongly at the 200 metre mark. And the grey filly swept away from them. From a little kiss. Kameen getting through on the inside. Ockle three from last. But Tristan R. Is going to outclass them totally. Wins a thousand guineas by three. Pulling up. Close for second. I'll give it departure. Very very deep when they balance for home golden prayer tackled by a little kiss Tristan R now Tristan R comes on strongly at the 200 meter mark and the grey filly swept away from them from a little kiss Kameen getting through on the inside Ockle three from last but Tristan R's going to outclass them totally wins a thousand guineas by three pulling up close for second I'll give it to Gameen on the inside from Ockle tree Tristan R first run he runs second in the uh 
1400 at Cork and we had the stable mate Heavenly View beat him that day and um, my brother rode him that time and he felt that he was probably a shade unlucky not to have won the race and that was the first signs of um, we had of the horse and his first run for us and he was a horse that was hard to gauge because he was very lazy and relaxed on the track and he put his best foot forward on the race day. And then south of Belmont followed by Better Loosen Up and the last of all the wires tailed off when they sweep to the turn. 400 left to go. Light Show Heavenly View about to come to the bend together with Redelver and Jet Fighter challenging. Acid Print don't play waiting for the runs and further back in the field Escape King. Heavenly View took the lead at the 200 from Light Show. Here's Acid Print getting a run through now followed by Redelver and Better Loosen Up diving through to the inside. Heavenly Views in front, they've kicked away from Acid Print. Uh, don't better loosen up, finishing well, but uh, Heavenly Views in front as they hit it, and Heavenly View won it by a neck. Better loosen up. The line Michael Clark was looking for was this: better was only going to get better, and better, and better again. May Rizzi's slashing win in the Herbert Power elevated him to favouritism for the 1989 Foster's Caulfield Cup. Legendary American jockey Bill Shoemaker was an added attraction for racegoers on Caulfield Cup Day. Shoemaker had the mount on Sydney three-year-old Dr. Grace in the one million dollar race. A thousand metres to go and Willie Shoemaker took the three-year-old Dr. Grace to the lead. By a head to co-sign with the rails a length and a half to Rivik Chikaro and there followed Ideal Sentiment. About a length away to Nay Rizzi. Hunter with his run round the outside. The Phantom going with him and they were followed then by Research and Power of Destiny. Further back is Stirring, Cold Diesel out very wide to make his sprint at them. Then Apollo run, Mr. Dynamite superimposed Kudz and Palace Revolt. 500 left to go now. Cosine and Dr. Grace are still the two leaders sweeping up to the turn. Citizens rushed up to them and then Ideal Sentiment. Chikaro just behind the leaders from Power of Destiny and Hunter. Out very wide Apollo Run and Cold Diesel the widest when they set sail for home. Cosine led Dr. Grace and Citizen on the outside. Then the Phantom followed by Stirring and look at Cold Diesel coming home now down the outside. The Phantom and Cold Diesel reach the lead now from Apollo Run. Fighting back Dr. Grace. It's Cold Diesel on the outside, Nayrezi bursting through, but Cole Diesel will win the Caulfield Cup by a long neck to Nayrezi, and third is the Phantom just in front of Apollo Run. Mm. Grayson Citizen on the outside, then the Phantom followed by Stirring, and look at Cole Diesel coming home now down the outside. The Phantom and Cole Diesel reach the lead now from Apollo Run, fighting back Dr. Grace. It's Cole Diesel on the outside, Nayrezi bursting through, but Cole Diesel will win the Caulfield Cup by a long neck to Nayrezi, and third is the Phantom just in front of of Apollo run. Said a man wider out Sedestin and the Phantom is joining him with a good run down the outside. Very deep on the track. Cold Diesel is rattling home and so is Apollo run. Halfway down the running now Sedestin takes the lead but Cold Diesel is swapping them. Cold Diesel hit the front 100 metres left to go. No Rizzi is bursting clear. Cold Diesel in front of No Rizzi coming after it. Cold Diesel in front. Cold Diesel has won the Foster Caulfield Cup. A long deck to No Rizzi. Third home is the Phantom, I think, or Apollo run and a photo for third. The Phantom and Apollo run. Back behind them, then came Cosine with Stirring. Front of Apollo run. Cold Diesel's Burnborough finish was one of the most exciting witnessed at Caulfield in many years. Owned and trained by Greg Mance, Cold Diesel lifted his stake earnings to over a million dollars in winning the Cup. Connections bypassed the Caulfield Cup in favour of the Cox Plate, the supreme test at weight for age. As always, this great race attracted the cream of Australasia's thoroughbreds. His Cox on Tullick, Farlap, Heroic, the list goes on, and Bone Crusher when he won it over our Waverley star back in 1986, Dulcify in 79 and Surround in 76. The list goes on. Vaux Rogue and our Westminster bounced out quickly. There goes the Phantom and Prokolhar and Tristan are up in the middle, and Almorad and Kortzer are over on the inside, and Stylish Sentry comes over and leads at the judge now. Stylish Sentry goes to the front, going out of the uh, straight now on the Cox Plate. To lead a length and a half now to the Phantom and Tristan are third. Fourth in the middle is Prokolhar and from Almorad. Vaux Rogue out three deep around Kortzer and then Kings High. Then Vitelli get over on the inside, Riverine a charm, two for the back, our Westminster Zabil. Empire Rose is back second last and Apollo run last of all. Had the 1400 metre mark and Stylish Sentry out with a big lead about three or four lengths in front. Vorog has gone to second but he's caught out very wide. He sweeps around the outside to go up second. Over on the inside of him is the Phantom. Therefore Zabil, Empire Rose is 15 from them and three to Apollo run 
last of all. At the turn of the 8.50 and the three-year-old in front, Stylish Century, led by a length and a half. The Phantom is second, they're followed by Vaux Rogue. Small hard at work at Vaux Rogue, running third, he's not going well. Here's El Marad getting off the rail, he's coming into it now. They're followed by Tristan R. Vitalik and further back, Courts at Kings High. Well back, Riverina Charm and our Westminster Stylish Century in front, but El Marad has run the second now, 500 to go. A length into Tristan R. Vitalik followed by the Phantom. Then further back, our Westminster Vaux Rogue going backwards, the others aren't in it. Stylish Century, the one they've got to run down though on the turn a length in front. El Marad stride by stride and our Westminster coming with a great run at the 200 metre mark. Stylish Century in front. El Marad is starting to come after him on the outside. El Marad getting to Stylish Century. The pull and the weights. El Marad on the outside gets his nose in front. He's going home better and El Marad, great performance, takes the Cox Plate. El Marad a nose to Stylish Century and Empire Rose has got up to run third. They've got to run down though on the turn a length in front. El Marad stride by stride and our Westminster Westminster coming with a great run at the 200 metre mark. Stylish Century in front. Al Morad is starting to come after him on the outside. Al Morad getting to Stylish Century. The pull and the weights. Al Morad on the outside gets his nose in front. He's going home better. And Al Morad, great performance, takes the Cox Plate. Al Morad a nose to Stylish Century. And Empire Rose has got up to run third. And I won't be at all surprised if this wonderful overseas uh, stallion goes on to take out the big two miler at Flemington on Tuesday week. This has been stamped with class, this win by Almorad. I spent some time telling you Colin Hayes had made the comment that Almorad might well be the greatest stayer he's ever prepared. And I said, don't take it lightly because those, those horses that he has prepared included at Talak and Belldale Ball, but more importantly, Dulcify. Michael Clark takes out the Cox Plate for El Marad's trainer Colin Hayes, his Cox Plate win came just two days after announcing his retirement. His head-in-head -head battle with Stylish Century was a memorable spectacle. The recurrence of a tendon injury denied the son of Alamanamu a crack at the Melbourne Cup. And he'll commence stud duties in 1990 at Cornwall Park Stud in Victoria. However, the Moody Valley Cup, run over 2,600 metres on Cox Plate Day, revealed some true Cups contenders. Brooklyn Dodger, terrific on the outside. Nabotto pushed along, will need a run on the fence, cosine. Sediston from the rear of the field. Then Pacific Mirage, followed by our watchman. And Mr. Dynamite is next, and then Palace Revolt. They're homeward bound, and it's Candide has taken a narrow lead from Stirring. Terrific joining in. Here comes Sediston with giant strides on the outside. The Tasmanian. Sediston sweeps to the front as they turn over Terrific and then it's Candide and Cosine. Sediston home for all money in the closing part of the race for Philip Holderman over Cosine and Terrific and Sediston salutes the judge. Last we'll start this section of the program with a look at a filly who was to become the best of her sex by the end of the season. Bounce again, straightens up well clear. Bounce again with the rider looking over the shoulder, three lengths on County Cashel, and then Triscay followed by Nuns Chorus and White Crest, but bounce again well clear at the 200 mark. Triscay, the filly, is coming after him quickly now. Triscay down the outside has rushed quickly to bounce again. Triscay is coming home the better. She draws level, takes the lead. She's going to bolt in. Tr bounce again is stopping quickly in second place, and Triscay shied at the winning post, but won very easily over bounce again. Following her soft win in the Silver Slipper, Triskay was rested until the autumn. Down in Melbourne, it was the bletchingly cult Canny Lad who'd captured the public's attention. 300 to go now, Manitour went to the lead from Century Pike, two lengths away Canny Lad and Superstructure, Manitour in front of the 200, Century Pike trying to reach at the inside, Canny Lad a length and a quarter behind them under the whip and closing now, Manitour just in front, Canny Lad coming at him strongly the last little bit and Canny Lad goes on to win at three quarters to Manitour second Tristan R continued on her winning way in the group two, Wakeful Stakes wide. Courts are a long way back, 400 to go, hasty departure, the leader on the outside, Tristan R running on, running on on, and coming with her is La Tristia and then Gamine and a little kiss got up on the inside, Ockletree following her home, 2.50 to go, a little kiss in front, here's Tristan R finishing well on the outside, a little kiss by a nick, the grey filly ranges up puts her nose in front, Tristan R and Tristan R's coming clear treble for Cummings, Tristan R wins it by a length, a little kiss, La Tristia third, Ockletree. Race goers were treated to a brilliant exhibition of speed and stamina by Stylish Century in the Blue Ribbon Classic. 
then Zamor third, Stargazer on the rails, hanging a bit round the turn, Dr. Grace was next, Interstellar answering the challenge out wide, then Procol Harum when they set sail for home from Elbarg, below the 400, Stylish Century kicked away, got out by two and a half lengths now, from Counterfeit, Zamoff down the outside, and then Dr. Grace and Interstellar, Stylish Century at the 200, still three lengths in front now from Zamoff, who got the second, then Counterfeit and Dr. Grace, but it's Stylish Century, he's clear with 100 metres to go, Moses keeping him going, and Stylish Century wins the derby by two and a half to Zamoff, third Dr. Grace. Sat back till they went to at the 200, still three lengths in front now from Zamoff who got the second, then Counterfeit and Dr. Grace, but it's Stylish Century, he's clear with 100 metres to go, Moses keeping him going and Stylish Century wins the derby by two and a half to Zamoff, third Dr. Grace. Sat back till they went down to about the 1800, went to the lead very easily, you could see the pace was nice and even and no one wanted the front, took him to the lead. And he just dictated his terms from then on. Zamoff was a great In his second Group 1 Classic of the season, Stylish Century ran the fastest ever time for the 2,500 metres at Flemington. The program. This year he showed his versatility in the Gadsden Stakes on Derby Day at Flemington. It's probably just in front, but they stretched across the track. Prince Anton, Lonely Dreamer, Heavenly View, Tin Woodman behind them, followed by Planet Ruler, wider out on the track, Light Show, Boardwalk Angel, Lonely Dreamer, then Rigoletto, about five lengths off the speed. Uncle Sid was next, Planet Ruler over in the lilac colours towards the inside, and they were followed by Petrero starting to warm up. About 400 metres left to go, Lonely Dreamer goes up on the outside of Rise and Shine, then Prince Anton, Heavenly View fourth and running on fairly strongly, Boardwalk Angel, Glen View, then Prismatic Star, Tin Woodman down the outside, Royal Reel, inside the 250, Heavenly View goes up on the outside of Rise and Shine. Still Rise and Shine a half in front. The Grey coming at it now. Heavenly View goes to the front. Planet Ruler out of the ground. He'll beat them. Planet Ruler gets through in the middle and Planet Ruler wins and what a run. Planet Ruler beat Heavenly View and third Glenview. Fourth home on the inside. Rise and Shine. They were followed home next in by Royal Reel. Rigoletto ran on well from Petrero. Prismatics. Half off the pace now, then Glenview hard pressured pass by Boardwalk Angel, Tin Woodman, Planet Ruler, 2.50 to go now, Rise and Shine got about a length in front of Heavenly View, Prismatic Star, Lonely Dreamer folding up and then Glenview, Heavenly View raced up with 100 metres to go, she put her head in front, Planet Ruler out of the pack, grabs her quickly, Planet Ruler raced up, took the lead and Planet Ruler has got up to win from Heavenly View, third could be... Back of the tail of the field, what an extraordinary performance. Flemington, we've always got to have a horse that can get 1,400 or 1,600 metres, and he just proved it today. But I've got the sectional times, you know, they ran the last two furlongs in 22.9 seconds, which is flying, and they've run 18.3. Which is a new metric which record. Which is a new metric record. Great run, what a run. Oh, he, he, he was, the horse that was behind the pack, and Brian York has shredded his way through the field, and, and on the line he was going away from there. He is back on back in the field. Photo from Rise and Shine. A son of the now deceased stallion Kairu Star, Planet Ruler scorched down the straight six in 18.3 seconds to create a new course record. Trained by... The same day, the McKinnon Stakes attracted several cup contenders, including last year's winner, Empire Rose. And two lengths away, terrific, and Vaux Rogue's open up with a big break. 9.50 metres to go on the minute, McKinnon Stakes, and Vaux Rogue led by five. Second was Eye of the Sky, a half to Fleetwood Lad, Horlix fourth, Research fifth. Two links to Kings High, Riverina Charm. Two links away, Empire Rose getting closer. Then they Rizzi followed out wider by Narboto. Superimposed well back. Lord Highbrow second last and terrific at the rear. Vaux in front, 600 to travel. Vaux by four links. Research is going up to chase. Then Fleetwood Lad, Kings High starts to run on. Eye of the Sky was next. Then came well back, Riverina Charm, Empire Rose about 10 links off them. And Horlix is now into the clear, 4.50 to go. Vaux shaken up by Cyril Small, let a length and a half. Second research, third Kings High running on Horlix. Empire Rose getting through, down to the 300. Vaux under the whip, Kings High comes at him with research. Here's Horlix on the outside and superimposed, flying from Empire Rose. Vaux in front, Horlix goes up on the outside with Kings High. Horlix and Kings High, Horlix is just in front of this great New Zealand mare going to win the McKinnon. Horlix a half length to Kings High and Vaux Rogue. Fourth in was superimposed and the run of the race was Empire Rose. She ran fifth. Then came Research. 
prodded in by Fleetwood Lad, Lord Highbrow, Riverina Charm, terrific now Botto. Second last eye of the sky. Inside the 400, Vaux Rogue two in front of Research. They're followed by Kings High, who's running on. Horlicks to the outside and then superimposed. Empire Rose not going on at the 200. Vaux Rogue three quarters, Kings High and Horlicks. Then Research and superimposed. Horlicks got to the lead now with Kings High going with a bit. It's Horlicks, the mighty mare in front by a neck there in the line. And the New Zealander won it by a half a length. Kings High is second. Vaux Rose and Horlicks, what a great win. But it was interesting to note earlier in the day, the last time's actually a new track record, a best met metric time record, helped to go. Injuries to Al Murad, Hunter, Apollo, Run and Narizzi depleted the cup field in the days leading up to that first Tuesday in November. The public rallied to support Empire Rose into favouritism, but the giant mare would have to create history if she were to win Australasia's greatest race in consecutive years. The light is flashing for the Melbourne Cup and there they go. And the great mare, Empire Rose, bounced out quickly with Koshki. Back by research as the three-year-old goes to the lead. With a lap to go in the Melbourne Cup and Stylish Sentry takes up the running. Stylish Sentry goes out of the straight. Then came on the outside a bit. Came at the head of the other Cellus Opera, followed by the Phantom. Citizen last of the main bunch. And five lengths to Cole Diesel who's tailed off. Up with 16 and superimposed. Two lengths further back, research saving ground. Sea Legend going around it. Then Hidden Rhythm followed by Kudz and further back, Go Pack. They're followed by Lord Highbrow, Terrific Plume de Ville. Salas Opera followed by Palace Revolt. Then Saratov, Citizen a mile from them with the Phantom. And eight lengths last of all, Cole Diesel can't keep up. And as they race up with about 900 to go, and Kudz has swept around the outside to go to the lead from Kosh King and then Stylish Century. Empire Rose has lost her position from Fleetwood Lad. Empire Rose is losing ground there. They've gone past her, followed by Power of Destiny and Sea Legend, but the imported Kudz the leader. Up to the bend, it's Kudz by three lengths. Around the outside goes Palace Revolt, followed by Hidden Rhythm. Empire Rose behind them, then Stylish Century dropping out. Superimpose is bumming with Fleetwood Lad when they turn for home. In the straight they race in the Melbourne Cup. Kudz the leader. Superimpose is ranging up now. It's the danger. Superimpose and down the outside. Lord Highbrow and terrific with a great run. It's Superimpose getting to the front with about 200 metres to go. Gauchy riding hard. Here's the stable bait. Terrific fighting back as Kudz. Here's a great go. 200 to go. Terrific coming at Superimpose. Terrific doing better in the Melbourne Cup and Terrific is going to win the Cup. Terrific gets up to win. Super Super imposes second, Goods third, a nose in front of right out the Terrific's Phantom. Terrific's coming. Melbourne away about three lengths in front, in second placing, super imposed, then power of destiny. Wide around on the track was Lord Highbrow, followed by Plume Door VA. Rosie's under pressure, she can't win. 300 metres to go, and super imposed takes the lead in the cup from Goods. Then Lord Highbrow down the outside was Terrific. Super imposed in front, it could be a Friedman Fanella. Super imposed in front, Terrific coming late right on the outside. Goods fights back, it's good, super imposed and terrific and terrific's gonna win the cup for lee friedman terrific kicked away and wins a quinella for lee terrific first superimposed second puts third then came the phantom followed by sedestin lord highbrow plume door va research power of destiny then friedman with terrific ridden by shane die who partnered the winner of the Golden Slipper this year, Quartz, and now he's come out and won the Melbourne Cup. But how do you think Darren Gouchy would feel? Darren's been riding superimposed most of the time, and he has ridden terrific. And today, Shane Dye jumped on this terrific, and he's beaten superimposed. Darren ran second, I think, about four years ago in the Melbourne Cup, and now he's had to uh, settle for second again. And Quartz, what a great run for Colin Hayes in his last year of training to run 30. Fastest time ever of 3.17.1. Terrific's Cup win in record time was a training triumph for young Victorian trainer Lee Friedman, as runner-up Superimpose made it a stable Quinella. Jockey Shane's Tuesday in November. I'm just about set for the Linlithgow Stakes. Many chances, 300 metres to go. Gin Rhythm probably just got ahead in front. Sylvatica coming through. And look at Boardwalk Angel in the middle. Boardwalk Angel gets the gap in the middle, goes up to tackle Gin Rhythm. And now Rodelva comes at them. But Boardwalk Angel sprinted away. And she'll bolt the Linlith go in. Boardwalk Angel races away from Rodelva and Petrero and wins by three. Boardwalk Angel first, Rodelva second, Petrero. Probably just got ahead in front. Sylvatica coming through. And look at Boardwalk Angel in the middle. Boardwalk Angel gets the gap in the middle, goes up to tackle Gin Rhythm. And now Rodelva comes at them, but Boardwalk Angel sprinted away and she'll bolt the Linlithgow in. 
Boardwalk Angel races away from Madelva and Petrero and wins by three. Boardwalk Angel first, Madelva second, Petrero third, then Gin Rhythm, Kirk Side, El Murder Jazz, Jet Fighter, Sylvatica Recabite. Third, Ockletree, fourth, Queen Gwyneth. Tristan R had been in devastating form going into the VRC Axe. The grey filly with a fluid action started a hot favourite in the 2500 metre classic and the supporters never had a moment's worry. 800 left to go, coming down near to the home turn now. Be My Valentine, three quarters, Sunshine, Sally Latristia, Hermoso, Queen Guinevere next, and then Grand Fun. Tristan are still there, running about six or sevenths, nearing the turn, and they were followed by Poza Rica. Highfield Queen pulled out wide to make its run. Next to Little Kiss when they sweep for home from Bistro Miss and Gamine tucked in on the inside rail. Down the straight they run, Latristia, they run, Latristia, the leader, led by a length now to Be My Valentine. The Tristan are trying to come on now. She's finishing well. She's in the clear. 250 to go. La Tristia, the leader. Here's Tristan R gobbling her up. The Grand Philly draws level with her stable mate. Tristan R puts her head in front under the whip from Cassidy. She's drawn away from La Tristia. Ockle tree late, but it's Tristan R's Oaks. Wins by two lengths. La Tristia a Cummings Quinella. Tristan R starting to close and then came Grand Fun Sunshine Sally. Tristan R moves up on the outside of La Tristia. Tristan R takes the lead from La Tristia. They've kicked away from Oakle Tree running on strongly, but Tristan R burst away and she's going to win the Oaks. Tristan R burst a length and a half. Second La Tristia a Cummings Quinella. Third I think home... Bart had to hold back the tears of the Tristia Cummings Quinella. Tristan R's clean sweep of the Phillies classics prompted her trainer to declare her the best filly he'd trained. High praise indeed for the daughter of champion Sire Sir Tristram, who was purchased at the 88... Nine better loosen up is the weight tip in the race with only 51 kilos. He was previously trained by Bart Cummings, now with Colin Hayes, and a very unlucky second to Heavenly View at his last start. Fen quit. 700 metres to go, Fen Dalton led by two, our crone a second. Third Boardwalk Angel, then Memphis Blues, followed by Bronze Knight Glenview, two to Royal Creation. Then Marlong, better loosen up, Painted Ocean, Pressman's Choice, Aces and Kings hooked out deep, and back of the rear, Acid Print with Swift Send and Never Quit. Straightening up, 500 metres to go, our Croner goes up the Fen Dalton, a length away, Boardwalk Angel, followed by Bronze Knight, Glenview running on, Roy's up the Fen Dalton. A length away, Boardwalk Angel, followed by Bronze Knight, Glenview running on, Royal Creation under the whip, and then better loosen up, Memphis Blues, 300 metres to go, it's our Craner in front, he's a length clear, getting into second place in Glenview, Royal Creation running on was better loosen up, our Craner kicked away, 150 to go, he's a length and a half clear, better loosen up, coming hard then, Swift Send, our Craner better loosen up, better loosen up, coming at our Craner, they go to the line, better loosen up one. A short half head to our Croner and Swift Send. Then Glenview and Leader. They sweep for home now in the Honda. 500 left to go and Fendel in the leader. Urge forward in front of our Croner. The margin half a length straightening up now. One and a half to Boardwalk Angel. Bronze Knight Glenview called on for her run. Next Royal Creation who's under the whip along the rails. And further back is better loosen up. Our Croner at the 300 got level with Fendel and put its nose in front. Boardwalk Angel a length and a half back. Glenview Royal Creation trying to reach the leaders. Better loosen up with a late run but it's our Croner in front 100 out here's better loosen up and swifts in from last our Croner in front better loosen up nearly level as they go to the line a bobbing finish better loosen up I think may have wanted to nose our Croner better loosen up was the Australia and uh, he's just gone under and uh, oh gee better loosen up really got to the line hard on the outside this is a lot closer than what a lot of people think too I myself first Colin um oh well we'll possibly think of Perth because the railway and the Rothwell and things like that that's our Croner. Better Loosen Up was then taken to the West, where he collected his first Group 1 event at Wait for H. starts making ground, and Queen of Pop was last at the 450. Hard act as the leader. On the outside, Jules Bruder's looming up. On the inside was Timeless Action. Here's Better Loosen Up joining in quickly, followed by Truth K, Sard and Spirit of Air. Into the straight, 250 to go. Hard act the leader. Here comes Better Loosen Up after him on the outside. Hard act led Better Loosen Up as levelled up. They're followed now by on the outside, K, Sard and Timeless action, better loosen up has taken the lead, and better loosen up has got it won. Better loosen up a length and a half. Hard act is a length and a half. Joining in quickly, followed by Truth K, Sard and Spirit of Air. Into the straight, 250 to go. Hard act the leader. Here comes better loosen up after him on the outside. Hard act led better loosen up has leveled up. They're followed now by on the outside, K, Sard and Timeless action. Better loosen up has taken the lead, and better loosen up has got it won. Better loosen up a length and a half. Hard act is a length and a half. There was more than five weeks to his next race, the Railway Stakes. But the race, the Railway Stakes.
but the Hayes stable had no worries about Better Loosen Up's fitness when he took his place in Western Australia's premier metric mile. There goes Better Loosen Up off five and six wide. He was followed by Proud Treaty. Well back to Medicine Kid. My Bobby Boo and Ma Wong. Into the straight they race with 300 to go and carry a smile. Raced up the Junel Dreamo and here's Jules Brute down the outer. Followed by Concord Flyer. Century got Better Loosen Up down the outside. 100 to go. Carry a smile from Jules Brute. Here comes Better Loosen Up on the outside. Better Loosen Up went to Jules Brute. Ma Wong got an inside run. But Better Loosen Up. Better Loosen Up has won ahead. Treaty well back to Medicine Kid. My Bobby Boo and Ma Wong into the straight. They race with 300 to go and carry a smile. Raced up to Junel Dreamo and here's Jules Brute down the outer. Followed by Concord Flyer. Century got Better Loosen Up down the outside. 100 to go. Carry a smile from Jules Brute. Here comes Better Loosen Up on the outside. Better Loosen Up went to Jules Brute. Ma Wong got an inside run, but Better Loosen Up. Better Loosen Up is what ahead. When he won the railway, it was just a <coughs> sensational performance because um, he, he got got uh, interfered with badly about the 600 metre mark. A horse come out in front of him from the inside and um, and he copped severe interference and it, and it wasn't sort of, uh, uh, didn't show up as much watching a TV film as what it did on the stewards film. Like he struck severe interference about the 600 metre mark and for him to overcome that and then go wide on the bend and um, his performance there was outstanding and, and that really showed the signs of him being a, a high quality horse. The first of the Group 1 races for two-year-olds is the Karakata Plate in Perth. The result of the race was just one of several disturbing results around Australia during the season. 200 to go, and Pack Lardy shot five lengths clear. Sharp Pack, high Pack from dancing away, and down the outside is Kit Carrot up. But how far Pack Lardy? She's going to win by about eight lengths from high Pack, ran second, maybe, or Kit Carrot up. Following the return of a positive swab, Pack Lardy was subsequently disqualified. The result made no difference to Tasman for the New Zealand 1,000 guineas. Two lengths at the moment, coming to the 600 metres. She set a pretty hot sizzling pace. Sea Mist is chasing her hard. Melody Fox is in behind her. Fiesta Rose being angled out to lunge and make a bit of a run at her. Yankees effort drifting a little bit now. And round the outside comes Jade Gate past the 400. They go a bit further back in the running. They were followed by Huck at Terry and a bit further back again to Super In. But as they race to the distance now, it's Philippa Rush. And uh, she's cruising at the moment, Philippa Rush. She's going beautifully for Chris Johnson. He's just sitting on her. Look at her come away. She's six lengths in front of the field. Super In's running home pretty well next to Seamist. And through the centre for Esther Rose. Super In's come to the end of its run and Seamist is going to take second. In winning the guineas, Philippa Rush recorded her ninth win from ten starts. The filly was only... ...went on to contest the Dominion's richest classic, the $400,000 New Zealand Herald Derby. Knights getting off the... Rentino got right through on the inside to go with Impersalia. Three deep then is Pumper Nickel as they swing into the straight. Super Fiesta coming wide and on the very outside, Madame Bardot. Castletown looking for room. Rentino, Pumper Nickel, the leaders at the 300 metres. Here's Castletown getting a split from Super Fiesta at the 250. Castletown, Rentino settled down to it from Pumper Nickel only battling now. Castletown shot to the leader. At the 150 from Rentino, followed home by Knights and out wide Finnegan Fox. But Castle Town's going to bolt in. It's an Irish derby. Two and a half now. Second at the line was Rentino, then followed by just a dance. And Knights was next. Castle Town was ridden to perfection by Bruce Compton to win the Dominion's richest classic. Castle Town. The Dominion's major sprints. First up, it's the Sir Tristram Railway Stakes at Ellerslie. Pacific Star led them by two and a half, three lengths. Monarch Prince now coming after it. Out wider here, Courier Bay winding up as well. Anne of Stratford back on the inside rail. Pacific Star still in charge. Courier Bay winding up. Big runs by Mr. Tiz out wide and Anne of Stratford. But it's still Pacific Star in charge now. Estes Park, Mr. Tiz on the outsides. Grab them very quickly though. Mr. Tiz at pose. Take put pay to it. It's raced away. It's going to win it. Anne of Stratford battling for second. Oh, very close. Estes Park or Anne of Stratford. In the out wide and next star still in charge. Courier Bay winding up big runs by Mr. Tiz out wide and Anna Stratford. But it's still Pacific Star in charge now. Estes Park, Mr. Tiz on the outsides. Grab them very quickly though. Mr. Tiz at pose. Take put pay to it. It's raced away. It's going to win it. Anna Stratford battling for second. Oh, very close. Estes Park or Anna Stratford. In the out wide and Anna Stratford. But it's still Pacific Star in charge now. Estes Park, Mr. Tiz on the outsides. Grab them very quickly though. Mr. Tiz at pose. Take put pay to it. It's raced away. It's going to win it. Anna Stratford battling for second. Oh, very close. Estes Park or Anna Stratford. In the 1989 running of the railway stakes, Mr. Tiz had dead heated with our Westminster. But this year he was a clear winner. 
In 1989, Mr Tiz also had to share the spoils in the Elder Bank Stakes with Festal when the pair ran a New Zealand record for 1,200 metres. They were followed further back then by Vane Sovereign and Anne of Stratford. Courier Bay's about midfield, followed then by Zephyr Magic, SPRA. And further back in the field then we've got, as they come along, Flint Seal, Bolshoi Stars, well back. Mr Tiz about the middle of the field. At the moment it's Lady Burberry, it's Vane Sovereign, Pike Sun, Squire Grey getting a split straight order. And Mr Tiz rocketing home and down the outside, Anne of Stratford coming into it. Mr Tiz made the lead from Vane Sovereign, Squire Grey, Zephyr Magic. And further back to straight order, but Mr Tiz too good, won it from Vane Sovereign, Zephyr Magic. And a son of Bletchingly. Black Sun Squire Grey getting a split straight order. And Mr. Tiz rocketing home and down the outside. Anne of Stratford coming into it. Mr. Tiz made the lead from Vane Sovereign. Squire Grey, Zephyr Magic. And further back to straight order. But Mr. Tiz too good. Won it from Vane Sovereign. Zephyr Magic. And a son of Bletchingly. Mr. Tiz clearly proved himself to be New Zealand's leading sprinter with a powerhouse display. The fight by Lance O'Sullivan. The William Reed Stakes run on Australia Day attracted a field of very smart sprinters, including Vaux Rogue who was commencing his autumn campaign. At the 600, Tiger Cross, the outsider in front by about a half length lightning bend, and Red Alva joining in. Vaux Rogue a length and a half away, called on for his run. Sally Century on the inside of him, Strawberry Ranch, the fence, two lengths, Gold Trump, and then El Murder Jazz. They're homeward bound. Red Alva goes to the lead from Lightning Bend. Vaux Rogue coming for the challenge. Starly Century and Strawberry Ranch looking for the way out, and then El Murder Jazz and Ma Wong around the turn. Red Alva just in front of Lightning Bend. Strawberry Ranch with a split bow, Rogue Starly Century staking claims. Lightning Bend is fighting back. Strawberry Ranch trying to pick him up. Lightning Bend in front. Oh, I think he's just won Lightning Bend from Strawberry Ranch. Starly Century. Ridden by Wayne Harris, Lightning Bend sizzled around the 1200 metres at Mooney Valley in one minute, nine seconds to establish a new track record. The... Here's what happened along the way. At the 500, nearing the turn, Vaux Rogue, the leader, is about three lengths in front. King's High is second at the turn, and they're followed by Supreme Pose, who's got into third place, and they balance for home. 350 metres to go. Vaux Rogue and Small had a look around. He's still three lengths in front of King's High. Die calling on Supreme Pose, but Vaux Rogue still by three. At the 200, he's pulled the whip. Now Supreme Pose is trying to reach him from King's High. Vaux Rogue in front, 100 metres to go. Supreme Pose is picking him back, but Vaux Rogue has a good break. Vaux Rogue will win his third. Vaux Rogue scores again from Supreme Pose. King's highest third. Controversy. Just to go. Vaux Rogue and Small had a look around. He's still three lengths in front of King's High. Dyke calling on Supreme Pose, but Vaux Rogue still by three. At the 200, he's pulled the whip. Now Supreme Pose is trying to reach him from King's High. Vaux Rogue in front, 100 metres to go. Supreme Pose is picking him back, but Vaux Rogue has a good break. Vaux Rogue will win his third. Vaux Rogue scores again from Supreme Pose. King's High is third. Controversy. Back in Melbourne for the Autumn Carnivals, better loosen up, continued on his winning way. Two lengths to superimpose down the outsider, and then a long break to better loosen up, followed by Bailey and here. Vaux Rogue is the leader, superimpose is coming after him on the outside as they run to the 250. Vaux Rogue about to be tackled by superimpose, who looks to be going the better. Superimpose has taken the lead with 100 metres left to go. Better loosen up is flying home down the outside, but superimpose looks to have it won. Better loosen up is flying. Better loosen up coming up, superimpose. Better loosen up. The last stride. Better lose with up as one of the last stride from Superimpose and Vaux Rogue. Following Vaux Rogue about to be tackled by Superimpose, who looks to be going the better. Superimpose has taken the lead with 100 metres left to go. Better loosen up as flying home down the outside, but Superimpose looks to have it won. Better loosen up as flying. Better loosen up coming up, Superimpose. Better loosen up in the last stride. Better lose with up as one of the last stride from Superimpose and Vaux Rogue. Following up. Superimpose went past Vaux Rogue, who's beaten a length and a half to better loosen up. Superimpose through to the front. Better loosen up, running on strongly, might get the second. Superimpose in front, better loosen up, flashing at him. He's going to beat him. Three wins for Clark and Hayes. Better loosen for the guineas, the light. However, there were some memorable races involving Zabil and Styly Century. First up, it was the Cadbury Australian Guineas. They race up in the direction of the home turn, 650 to run arc regular, leading about a half length. Stylish Century moving up quickly on the outside to join it as they make the home turn, a length and a half anchor and hope, followed by Economy on the outside of Double Gin. Pull to the outside, Zabil as they straighten, and they're followed by Stargazer Academia. Cool credits a long way back, so is the Oval at Reganza. 400 left to run arc regal, still in front of Stylish Century down the outside. Then Zabil starting to wind up, coming home pretty well. And over on the outside was Academia, 250 to run, it's Zabil.
Zabil has ranged up on the outside to hit the front from Mark Riggle. Stylish Century can't go on Academia and finishing on pretty well. But Zabil kept going, has kicked away about two lengths to Mark Riggle and down the outside Academia. And it's Zabil for the Cadbury Australian Guineas. He wins it well, Zabil, two and a half lengths to Mark Riggle. A cold of Stylish Century down the outside. Then Zabil starting to wind up, coming home pretty well. And over on the outside was Academia, 250 to run. It's Zabil. Zabil has ranged up on the outside to hit the front from Mark Riggle. Stylish Century can't go on Academia and finishing on pretty well. But Zabil kept going, has kicked away about two lengths to Mark Riggle and down the outside Academia. And it's Zabil for the Cadbury Australian Guineas. He wins it well, Zabil, two and a half lengths to Mark Riggle. A cold who possesses a lot of quality. Zabil is the son of the... ...for eight stars with another Group 1 event from New Zealand. They sprint for home. Mickey's down went to John DeLara and Thuz's next. Crone has got no room in Regal City. Riverina Charm going a big one down the outside at the 250. Riverina Charm Castle Town's out after it now with Mickey's Town still battling away. Riverina Charm Castle Town on the outside. Riverina Charm fresh up from Castle Town going hard after it. The Derby winner. Riverina Charm on the inside has Lord no, it's almost a dead heat. Might be River Charm Castle Town on the outside. Riverina Charm fresh up from Castle Town going hard after it the derby winner riverina charm on the inside has lord no it's almost a dead heat might be riverina's charms win was achieved first up from a three-month spell Laurie Lam the season was far from over for the courageous mayor into the straight 400 metres out and John DeLauer is tackled now by Regal City Crona comes the inside Horlicks is coming into it and on the outside is Castle Town out wide is still Red Chiffon at the 300 metres and look at the mere go Horlicks in front running on late now Castle Town then followed by Red Chiffon in the Phantom Horlicks in front at the 100 metres holding Castle Town the Phantom and Red Chiffon she's too good the superstar mare wins Horlicks Lean beautifully in After seconds third, Controversy surrounded Vorog's next two starts Following his third to better loosen up in the blamey stakes, Vorog's connections blamed a discrepancy with the official track rating for his defeat. Next up, it was the St George Stakes at Caulfield. At the 400, he's about a length in front of Marwong. King's High still right on Vorog's hammer around the home turn. Vorog in front, he's laid off the fence. The run for King's High, if he's good enough. Marwong coming at him on the outside. Inside the 200, and it's Vorog about a half in front of Marwong, and King's High hasn't got a run at them now. Vorog, he's finding plenty. He's finding enough. He's a length in front under the whip, and Vorog is going on King's High out late, but Vorog won at three quarters to King's High. On returning to scale, Michael Clark, the rider of King's High, fired in a protest alleging interference from the top of the straight to the 200 metre mark. The stewards deliberated for what seemed an eternity before upholding the protest and awarding the race to King's High. Vorog's connections were dumbfounded and in the heat of the moment declared that Vorog would not run again in Melbourne during the autumn. Two weeks later at Caulfield, it was time for the real stylish century to come forward. Stylish Century, 2.50 to go, he's two or three in front. Zabil's in a bit of trouble under the whip, then Western Front there and Stargazer. Stylish Century, 100 to go, he's three lengths in front. He's holding Zabil safely at bay. The Derby winner's back, he's coming away. Stylish Century easily. Stylish Century by four and a half, Zabil. Z Stylish Century, 2.50 to go, he's two or three in front. Zabil's in a bit of trouble under the whip, then Western Front there and Stargazer. Stylish Century, 100 to go, he's three lengths in front. He's holding Zabil safely at bay. The Derby winner's back, he's coming away. Stylish Century easily. Stylish Century by four and a half, Zabil. With, the... With their unbeaten records intact, Kenny Ladd and Triskay met for the first time in Victoria's premier two-year-old race, the Blue Diamond Stakes. Will Bunce through the first 250 metres. Gay trap wide the outside. Next North Star Command followed by Canny Ladd. Next behind those about a length away is Cougar over on the inside of Mahazan and Rory's image. And last of all, Dancers Joy. At the 500, Satellite Bay, the leader, Triskay's rushed up into second place in coming to the turn. Zedigal in the middle when they race to the 400 metre mark. Mahazan running on round the outside from North Star Command. Canny Ladd very hard ridden behind those. Into the straight and Triskay hit the front from Zedigal. Mahazan and Sprawl nearly fell. In the straight 200 to go, Triskay, the leader from Zedigal. Mahazen balanced up coming and then Kenny led in the centre. Triskay grabbed by Mahazen. Mahazen's bolted away from Triskay. Kenny led running on. But Mahazen's clear and Mahazen will win the Blue Diamond by a length and a half to Kenny led. Triskay tied to third. 
command. Canny Lad very hard ridden behind those. Into the straight and Trisco hit the front from Zedigel. Mahazen Sprawl nearly fell. In the straight 200 to go. Trisco the leader from Zedigel. Mahazen balanced up coming and then Canny Lad in the centre. Trisco grabbed by Mahazen. Mahazen's bolted away from Trisco. Canny Lad running on. But Mahazen's clear and Mahazen will win the Blue Diamond by a length and a half to Canny Lad. Trisco tied to third. Mahassan's clear-cut victory continued Colin Hay's assault on Group 1 races during his final season as a trainer. The Group 1 races during his final season as a trainer. The Blue Diamond was his 10th. It was a great... Kenny Ladd bounced back to winning form in the VRC Sires Produce Stakes. With his regular partner Shane Dye under suspension, Jim Cassidy took over the reins. Kenny Ladd about fifth or sixth with Cassidy calling on him at the top of the straight. Draw card following him home now, but Andy is with a big break inside the 400. Three lengths in front of Century Pike, two temperate King. Kenny Ladd under the whip next, China Beach, and then draw card struggling. Andy is in front of the 200 under the whip, two lengths to Century Pike. Kenny Ladd is closing and draw card is flashing home. Andy is stopping, Century Pike grabs the lead. Kenny Ladd coming at them. Kenny Ladd draws level with Century Pike, got there! Up in front. Century Pike second, now into the clear was Kenny Ladd, followed by China Beach and Temperate King. Antaeus 2.50 to go, is two in front. Century Pike is trying to run it down with Kenny Ladd, and here's Draw Card. Draw Card is swabbing them. Century Pike goes to the front. Draw Card, Kenny Ladd coming at it. Century Pike going to it. Kenny Ladd and might have got up on the last stride, Kenny Ladd. To beat Century Did get up in the last stride, Kenny Ladd. Margins a short half head by a head. 75 and 60, Century Pike second. Would not run again in Melbourne during the autumn. The connections of Vaux Rogue later relented on that decision. And the champion, who's thrilled race girls for several seasons, got his chance to win consecutive Australian Cups. And they've raced to the 1100 metre mark, and Vaux Rogue is the tearaway leader. He's six lengths in front of Stylish Century, who's racing solo. About ten lengths back then to Kingston Rule third. They've really gone through the first thousand metres very quickly. The Phantom is fourth, three lengths behind Kingston Rule, and they're followed then by Better Loose and up the inside of Kings High, and about three lengths to Citizen with 800 left to go. Vaux Rogue still with a big lead. Next concordant, superimpose at least 15 from the leader, and last of all, Lord Palmerston. They race up with 600 metres left to go. And Vaux Rogue first for home. He's by three lengths to Stylish Century. Moses calling on the three-year-old. Kingston Rule third at the top of the straight. And uh, they were followed then by the Phantom. And Kings High pulled out from Better Loose and up there in the straight. Vaux Rogue with a big lead inside the 400. He's four lengths in front of Stylish Century. Who can't peg back the leader. Better Loose and up are starting to finish quickly on the outside. Vaux Rogue in front by three at the 200. Better Loose and up the danger. Superimpose coming quickly. Vaux Rogue about two lengths in front of Better Loosen up, superimposed. Vaux Rogue with 100 to go by a length. He's holding them at bay. The Rogue will win his second in a row. Vaux Rogue wins at a length. Better Loosen up, superimposed. As third. It was Vaux Rogue at his best in the Australian Cup. Superimposed. As third. It was Vaux Rogue at his best in the Australian Cup. The Vaux Rogue that's running on strongly. Then Lord Palmerston, followed by superimposed at Eston and Concordance. 300 to go, small goes for the whip on Vaux Rogue. He's four in front, here's Better Loosen Up, running on strongly with superimposed. Vaux Rogue of the 250, a length and a half in front. Better Loosen Up is trying to run him down. Here's superimposed on the Phantom. Vaux Rogue still a length in front. Better Loosen Up can't get him. Vaux Rogue's hanging on, he'll make it back to back. He is a champion. He's done what early champions can do. Vaux Rogue wins a length. Better Loosen Up second, superimposed third, then stylish entry. We've seen a wonder. Best in the Australian Cup. The Vaux Rogue that the public have come to know and love. The racegoers of Melbourne gave the champion an ovation usually reserved for Melbourne Cup winners. In winning the 26th race of his career, Vaux Rogue's stake earnings stood at just $6,000 short of the magical $3 million mark. He's run that year in the Australian Cup, he was second up in it and, uh, and uh, Vaux Rogue at that stage was the best and uh, uh, ours was making ground rapidly on him at the finish. and. Uh, um, it was certainly no disgrace being beaten that day by Vaux Rogue, but then from then on we, we were just almost invincible. Better loosen up. Score standing at one all, the two Colts clashed again in the Group 2 Alistair Clark Stakes. 400 to go, Starley Century shows the way. Key Dancer going up on the outside and here's Zabil joining in. The chips are down as they come to the turn and Moses goes for Starley Century as Zabil is challenging on the outside. Key Dancer couldn't go on and then double Jim Graydon 
Gibson Gambler. Zabil takes the lead as they turn over Starley Century. A gap then to Graydon Gambler and Key Dancer. Zabil on the outside and Starley Century fight it out from Key Dancer and Graydon Gambler. Zabil going a bit the better and punched out by Michael Clark. Zabil had in double gin. Graydon Gambler. Zabil takes the lead as they turn over Starley Century. A gap then to Graydon Gambler and Key Dancer. Zabil on the outside and Starley Century fight it out from Key Dancer and Graydon Gambler. Zabil going a bit the better and punched out by Michael Clark. Zabil has just won from Starley Century. Graydon Following Gambler their titanic battle down the length of the Mooney Valley Strait, Starley Century's rider Kevin Moses lodged a protest. After a long hearing, stewards dismissed the protest and the Colts headed to Sydney with a score 2-1 in Zabil's favour. Placing to Vaux in the Australian Cup, better loosen up headed north in search of further Group 1 success. And he found it in the Sedgen Ho Stakes. Loosen up in front of three horses, but away goes Bow Rogue down the back. At the 1200 mark, Cyril Small has let the champ go, and Bow Rogue is 12 lengths in front of Horlicks, who's got the unenviable task of taking the field up to the leader. The Stella and Chalet are on the outside, is last at the 800 mark, and it's the Bow. Bow Rogue is still about 10 lengths in front, Horlicks is second, Kings High third. Corkage on the outside as they come down the side, followed by Riverina Charm, Red Chiffon. Out deep as Dr. Grace at the 600 mark, a gap to superimpose Sedestin. Then Palace Revolt, better loosen up Shalaya and Interstellar as last. They're starting to peg Bow Rogue back as they come around the turn. He straightened up two lengths in front. Here's Horlicks. Horlicks is quickly looming up to Bow Rogue as they turn for home. Kings High in third place, followed by Riverina Charm. And Dr. Grace on the outside is putting in a big run and going with him as Sedestin. Horlicks flat to the boards in front of the the 200, Dr. Grace and Sedestin are challenging and better loosen up on the extreme outside. Sedestin and better loosen up have come away. They're fighting it out. Better loosen up on the extreme outside is drawing clear and better loosen up wins the Sedgen Ho. Sedestin second, superimposed third, fourth, Dr. Grace, fifth, Horlicks, sixth is Interstellar. Horlicks flat to the board, flat to the boards in front of the 200. Dr. Grace and Sedestin are challenging and better loosen up on the extreme outside. Sedestin and better loosen up have come away. They're fighting it out. Better Better loosen up on the extreme outside is drawing clear and better loosen up wins the Sedgen Ho. Sedestin second, superimposed third, fourth Dr. Grace, fifth Horlicks, sixth is Interstellar. Bow Rogue weakened to run in the middle of the pack, followed by... Enough have come away, they're fighting it out. Better loosen up on the extreme outside is drawing clear and better loosen up wins the Sedgen Ho. Better loosen up's four group one wins made him one of the stars of the season. His win in the Sedgen Ho boosted his stake earnings to just under $1.2 million. A tally he seems six. And remember the flying filly from the West? Well, at her first start in the East, she won the Sweet Embrace Stakes. On the strength of her proven wet track form, she started favourite for one of the racing world's richest two-year-old events, the Tui's Golden Slipper beginning 600 out our horizon on the outside is just shading with me in third place wrap around followed by temperate king out wide and then road song close enough if good enough pack lani flat to the boards as they turn for home further back then as canny lad as they straighten up followed by all ranch and trisca is pushed right off the track on the corner into the straight with me and our horizon with me appears to be a narrow leader in third place pack lani under the whip running on gamely followed by canny lad and further back luso inside the 200 mark with me as the leader can Canny Lad getting through on the inside of the filly and they're clear of Paklani. With me just in front, Canny Lad, the cult, is driving through on the inside. He's coming home the better and it's another golden slipper to Shane Dye. The Victorian Canny Lad draws away to beat with me. Paklani third. Canny Lad's slipper victory was all courage and class. And for jockey Shane Dye, it was back-to-back -back wins in the great race. Trainer Rick Hook through Bletchingly, who now joins his sire Biscay with two golden slipper winners. Loosen up and Vaux Rogue in the Oar, the Blamey and the Australian Cup before heading to Sydney for an appointment with history. Rain forced him out of the BMW, his main mission, and into the Doncaster. Or was it Amber destiny? Right on top of the gates and they steady, they're off. Off and running, st ground at that point came. Lig on arms, our grey invader followed by Rajamar and superimpose as last as they come to the crossing at the travelling wide. Further back as Groucho on the inside of Shaftesbury Avenue followed by our Westminster, our Poverty Bay deep. At the head of the others, Windsor's Powell followed by our Croner, don't play, heavy sailing well back. And then our grey invader, Stargazer, superimpose, Memphis Blues, Eastern Classic, Lig on arms. And that's the order as the...
they come around the turn and back with the tail end is Rajamar. Into the straight, Wong is just the leader over last year's winner, Marimbula Bay. Shaftesbury Avenue third and then spot the rock and comrade who made the bend very wide, followed on the fence by Groucho and then out very wide, followed on the fence by Groucho and then out Croner followed by Happy Sailing, out Poverty Bay as they top the rise where Shaftesbury Avenue shot clear. Look at our grey invader. Our grey invader coming from near last has run into second place is coming after Shaftesbury Avenue and superimposes jumping out of the ground. Superimposes rapidly overhauling Shaftesbury Avenue. Oh, Shaftesbury yeah. Avenue still in front. Oh. Superimposed oh. wide out. Lunged and got up to win the Doncaster. He's come from near last. Superimposes if ever. Avenue and superimposes jumping out of the ground. Superimposes rapidly overhauling Shaftesbury Avenue. Oh, Shaftesbury yeah. Avenue still in oh. front. Superimposed oh. wide out. Lunged and got up to win the Doncaster. He's come from near last. Superimposed. If ever. Invader. Our grey invader coming from near last has run into second place is coming after Shaftesbury Avenue and superimposes jumping out of the ground. Superimposes rapidly overhauling Shaftesbury Avenue. Oh, Shaftesbury yeah. Avenue still in front. Superimposed oh. wide out. Lunged and got up to win the Doncaster. He's come from near last. Superimposed beat Shaftesbury Avenue. Third our grey invader who died on his run. Happy sailing fourth followed by Rajamar. Half an hour after the race we were celebrating up in the bar and uh, they just poured. And I mean, if the race had been run half an hour later, he wouldn't have won it. Just as taking, just as taking. If ever a horse deserved to win a Group One race, it's Superimpose. Carrying top weight and starting from the widest barrier, the son of Imposing went around every horse in the field for an impressive win. The Lee Friedman trained five-year-old lifted his stake earnings to one point seven five million dollars. Then I'll end and in the autumn, Petrero won his second Group 1 race of the season. Come to the 600 mark. Good old Ted in the middle of the track just led West Dancer three away. Led by McKechnie and Petrero as they turn the corner into the straight in the Victorian. Good old Ted about eight off the fence, led clearly over the rise from Select Prince, hard up against the inside rail. Here's the point in third place, followed by Alpine Flyer. Petrero next and then McKechnie and Autumn Dew going up and down in the one spot. Good old Ted joined on the inside by Select Prince. Look at Petrero. Petrero was going to fly in a moment he's smothering the two leaders Petrero and Jay Cassidy down the outside a hundred miles an hour and Petrero wins the galaxy sprinting away from select Prince third good old Resuming ten, from the spell Petrero's customary Petrero next and then McKechnie and Autumn Dew going up and down in the one spot good old Ted joined on the inside by select Prince look at Petrero Petrero was going to fly in a moment he's smothering the two leaders Petrero and Jay Cassidy down the outside a hundred miles an hour and Petrero wins the galaxy sprinting away from Select Prince, third good old Resuming from the spell, Petrero's customary lack of early speed didn't stop him from producing a powerful finishing burst. The son of Close Mountain Kingdom and Horlix wide out. Roger Citizen made it two Group One wins at Wait for Age in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Card Shark under heavy pressure. Now Dittman electing to stay near the fence on Citizen as they come around the corner where Better Loosen Up went to the lead narrowly over Rajamar. Citizen is getting to third. Red Chiffon gave up quickly and then Card Shark as they come over the rise. Better Loosen Up about eight off the fence just led Rajamar. Citizen will have to get a, get a move on now as they come to the 200 where Better Loosen Up wide out is in front. Here comes Citizen. Citizen on the inside of Better Loosen Up has got him covered I think. Citizen has raced through on the inside to head Better Loosen Up in the shadows of the post and the Sydney Cup favourite is drawing away in the last bit and he's going to win easily. Citizen by about three quarters on the line to Better Loosen Up with Rajamar third. In addition to two wait for age wins, Citizen won the Mooney Valley and Sandown Cups. He's by far the best Past the 400 mark and Wist again headed late Jester. Centro and let's hurry further out. Cassidy looking over the shoulder for Triske and she's right there, Jim. As they come to the 200 mark, Wist is the leader. Let's hurry running a big race. Centro can't go on. Triske taking a while to wind up. Wist is in front from let's hurry. Triske is now charging at them on the outside. Wist in front. Triske, Somalia bursting through in the middle. What a finish, I think, Triske. Triske's last stride victory was a true indication of the Phillies' determination to win. Triske is owned by Mr. We cross to New Zealand for the Swetnam Stud Sires Produce Stakes. Up to the turn and the Sires Produce play on travelling, putting his Lycra coming into it quickly, followed in by Milton Magic, then Ebre, and down the outside comes Indian King. Oh, Lycra uh, strode to the lead now, 200 left to go, and it's left them to it. Here's Milton Magic unwinding, followed by Ebre, and down the outside Indian Kingdom. It's all over Lycra Street of the opposition. Indian Kingdom and Milton Magic. Lycra won it, second Indian Kingdom, I think, for Milton. Lycra did not give her opposition a look in at Palmerston, and the filly again proved too classy at Ellerslie. 
Into the straight, 400 to go and getting a bar. Gee, this is good. Lycris torched around the outside and led easily at the 300 metres after being off the track throughout. It's on its own, Lycra. In second place, then, is High Octane and running on a little late sure cut, but it's a one-horse go at the 200 metres. Lycra by four, five, six, seven, if whatever you like, it's going to win by. Out wide, a sure cut's battling for the minors and battling on touch judge. Very, very impressive. Lycra's won it easing down. Second sure cut. Third at the line is a good go. Very close third. A well-named filly, Lycra is from the first crop of the Nijinsky Stallion tights. Following beautifully in After third placing in the BMW International, Horlicks returned to New Zealand to run on the TV New Zealand States. They race for home, 400 metres out. Catering King taken now by Mickey's Town. Horlicks trying to get a run between the two. So about three back to Regal City, further back Mr Brocker. At the 300 metres, Lani says go girl and she's taken the lead. Horlicks from Mickey's Town, then Catering King, Regal City at the 200 metres. And it's Horlicks in front. She's home, James, at the 150 from Mickey's Town. A late run, Mr Brocker. But that's why she's a champion. She's bolted in. Second over Mickey's town has just lasted for... What a fantastic season it was for Horlicks. Four Group 1 victories in three countries. A world record in Japan. For our next major cup event, we cross to Adelaide. As if his final year of training was following a script, Colin Hayes obliged with the winner. And the public favourite, Double Gin, shows the way. 600 to run, the crowd favourite, they love him. He's a length and a half to Water Boatman. Ideal Sentiment is back to out wide now by Grosvenor Hall. And Master Eclipse is winding up. Water Boatman's after Double Gin. Double Gin, the leader. Water Boatman comes after it quickly now. They're followed by Master Eclipse, reputed. Battling away as his arm, but Water Boatman goes to Double Gin. Double Gin, he's fighting back. Fight, son. He fights back, Double Gin. Water Boatman. Boatman got him. Water Boatman double gin dead heat again. I can't split these either. In his final season of training, Colin Hayes continued to create new records. Water Boatman's narrow win was Group 1 success number 13 for the champion trainer. For winning jockey Peter Hutch, the Australasian racing year, we now trek north to Queensland. First up, it's the Castle Main 10,000. Into the home straight, 350 metres to go. Gladful swept up on the outside of Vic Ejabar and ran to the front. Comrades getting a beautiful run on the inside. Festal now pulled out. Heads of State still there and Gypsy Rogue on the extreme outside. Prince of Trialia trying to burst through. Now he gets the split and Prince of Trialia has gone to them. Look at Planet Ruler. Planet Ruler flying on the inside. Prince Trialia in front. Planet Ruler can't catch him. Comrades getting a beautiful run on the inside. Festal now pulled out. Heads of State still there and Gypsy Rogue on the extreme outside. Prince of Trialia trying to burst through. Now he gets the split and Prince of Trialia has gone to them. Look at Planet Ruler. Planet Ruler flying on the inside. Prince Trialia in front. Planet Ruler can't catch him. Locally trained Prince Trialia defied the classy interstate opposition to record the biggest win in Philly just a few hours prior to the race. 400 metres to go, Pride of Carrier in front, not for long, here comes Lycra. Lycra's moved up on the outside and she's poked her nose in front of Pride of Carrier. Dancers Joy third on the inside, then King Rautaya, Marine Drive making up plenty of ground. Inside the 200, Lycra's the leader, he slaps her up a little bit, he's got her under the whip and she's clear. She's two in front, on the extreme outside, the Guida's flying home now. The Guida going home right over the top of her, the Guida beat Lycra. The Guida, plenty of ground, inside the 200, Lycra's the leader, he slaps her up a little bit he's got her under the whip and she's clear she's two in front on the extreme outside the guida's flying home now the guida going home right over the top of her the guida beat lycra the guida's barnstorming finish is surely a sign of better things to come trained by colin